I'm John Funder from Prince Henry's Institute in, in Melbourne in Australia and I've been asked to do a little three or four minute audio visual on a paper that recently I submitted and was ultimately accepted in the journal and it's called Mineralocorticoid Receptor Antagonists Emerging Roles in Cardiovascular Medicine. There are four points I'd like to make which I think underline what's in the paper. The first is that mineralocorticoid receptors um, evolved millions of years before aldosterone. So to call them aldosterone receptors is in fact probably a bit silly. Uh, they are in epithelia but most of them are not in epithelia and they uh, march to the beat of a different drummer. The second thing is that spironolactone, which we've always thought of as a, an antagonist or a blocker, in fact isn't a blocker it's what the pharmacologists call an inverse agonist. That is, that absent any other steroid, it has effects uh, opposite to those of aldosterone, for example, in the kidney, uh, but it doesn't deny aldosterone access to mineral corticoid receptors. Uh, it gets in, and it doesn't need to get into too many receptors before it will actually have its antagonist effect. The third and fourth things concern primary aldosteronism. Now currently people believe that somewhere between perhaps 8 and 13, call it 10% of essential hypertensives have got uh, autonomous aldosterone secretion or primary aldosteronism. But I think there's increasing evidence that that may in fact be an underestimate. Um, if we look at resistant hypertension, which is perhaps 20% of, of, of hypertensives who remain hypertensive despite being on um, three uh, agents including a, a diuretic, uh, then we know now that giving them low dose spironolactone or a plurinone has really almost magical effects in terms of lowering blood pressure. And the interesting thing there is that about 20% of those people with resistant hypertension prove to have primary aldosteronism, but there's no difference in the effect of spironolactone or plurinone between those with and those without primary aldosteronism. So perhaps all of them have got, uh, to some extent, autonomous aldosterone secretion. And the same thing is true of low renin hypertension, which is probably about another 20 or 30% of essential hypertension. And there's very recent data uh, small studies but very persuasive and convincing studies that again there's no difference between those uh, patients who are called primary aldosteronism because their aldosterone at the time of measurement was above the cutoff and those called low renin hypertension because it was below the cutoff. Their response to low dose mineral corticoid uh, receptor antagonist uh, therapy is absolutely identical. And again, suggesting that at least a proportion of the patients with low renin essential hypertension in fact do have autonomous aldosterone secretion. And finally, uh, to sort of underline this point, there are some very nice data from Greece where normal patients, normal people, but also patients with primary aldosteronism had a, a dexamethasone augmented fludrocortisone suppression test. And when that's done, uh, and the 97.5% confidence limits for the normal population taken, about 30%, in fact from the paper 31%, of people with hypertension proved to have uh, autonomous aldosterone secretion above the uh, two standard deviations above the mean of normal. So I think there's straws in the wind that perhaps that figure of 10% might need to be upgraded to perhaps even 30% of people with high blood pressure. There's a component of it at least that's due to inappropriate aldosterone secretion. But even if it's only 10% of the population, if you do the math, then in fact fewer than one primary aldosterone patient in 100 ever gets uh, screened, let alone confirmed or, or excluded, let alone diagnosed, let alone imaged, let alone undergo AVS, let alone specifically treated. There's an enormous 
part of the iceberg, if you like, uh, un under the under the sea level. Now, in ordinary common garden essential hypertension, giving low dose mineral corticoids, in fact, vasoprotective. Um, and as I've said, in, in resistant hypertension, it, it's game changing. And what's important is that we give it to all new hypertensives under the age of 70, because after that perhaps their renal function is going off a bit, as part of first-line therapy. This is, in, in a sense, evolutionary, but it's also revolutionary. And the cardiologists won't like it because they like body bags, outcome studies, and my response to them is, think of papillomavirus, think of uh, vaccinating people against carcinoma of the cervix, we don't have body bags. We don't have outcome studies. We know it's a good thing. We know it's safe. We know a lot about spironolactone, low-dose therapy. And to protect the 99 plus percent of patients with primary aldosteronism, because it's a much more uh, lethal disease than age, sex, and blood pressure matched essential hypertension, to protect them because they'll never get diagnosed. We need to include low-dose mineral corticoid receptor antagonists as part of first-line therapy in all hypertensives. Thank you. Read the paper. Send me a message. Bye.